This week's episode is sponsored by White's Beaconsfield. White's Beaconsfield is the number one company in the UK to brighten up your smile at a very affordable price. Get your perfect smile today using code AGJAMESENGLISH at checkout for a 15% discount on all products. from White's Beckinsfield. I'm on day five out of seven and my teeth are looking white. So it doesn't contain peroxide, so it's very, very safe for you to use on your teeth. It doesn't cause any sensitivity and I've literally got the most sensitive teeth. The most affordable product, works like a dream. Look how white, with no filter, no sensitivity, and it is just one of the best that I've ever used. Right, that's three days, it's crazy. I was everywhere. It, my life was, I couldn't walk down the street. Everyone knew who I was. And part of me loved that. Another part was like, it was scary, really scary. Like everyone knows who you are, but you feel alone. Someone gets drunk, shows the world's press all these pictures of me. I remember Piers Morgan coming up to me and sort of like saying, it's all right, mate. Hey, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> it's not, not fine. I'm not fine. In 2018, Kate showed an audience of 40 sex footage of myself. What? Just a couple of, just not long ago? I had four witnesses come forward. I have a high court injunction. That's criminal. So you're still- That's criminal. You so the following week after that, she's on Graham Norton in front of, I think, 20 million people live on BBC One, right? And the day before that, she's called a horse, Jordan's Crossdresser, right? And um, I'm like, Babe, I've got to say something. If I don't say something, it's all it's blown. I'm like, you've orchestrated this and created this. Is yeah, that not revenge I, porn? Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. and what, you know, this is beyond disgusting. I felt raped, absolutely raped in every single way. And as someone who promotes anti-bullying and someone who promotes um, trolling has trolled and I've got all the trolling evidence. I've got a whole stack of evidence where she's like threatened to destroy me publicly a time and time again because of these sick disgusting videos that she's got of me she's a liar absolute liar and i don't mind saying it a sociopath and i can prove it Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got big Alex Reed. How are you, brother? Big. Yeah. Big Alex Reed. <laughs> Who are you, young man, full of my fans? I'm Mr. James English from Glasgow. English, but yeah. you're Glaswegian. Yeah. It's a real name as well. So help, can, let me hear your English accent, darling. Let me hear your English accent, darling. Oh, that's... Um, all right, mate, that's fucking <laughs> good. All right. Are you still trying to do the acting? Yeah, it's not really happening. Yeah, I mean, it's back to the fighting then with that accent. Oh no, I am a darling. I, mm -hmm. Even actually, you say about the um, the fighting. Yeah. Even though I've had over three hundred fights. Mm -hmm. um, they're all act. I was a bullied kid. We're going deep, straight into the deepness. I was yeah, a bullied. Right, I was a bullied kid who pretended to be tough and wanted to fit in with everybody. Um, and I was acting. And then guess what? I, you get tough along the way. So I was always an actor, always a darling. Yeah, we, life, we, we're still acting. Everything's an act that's a charade, is not it? Do you find yourself, do you, do you know when you're acting and when you're being? Yeah, well, the Chinese say there's three different characters you have. One when you're around your friends, 
One when you're around your family, but the true one is when you're yourself alone. My God, I've just made myself a coffee. Yeah. And it's the most disgusting coffee ever. <laughs> oh my God. I, I don't know how long that coffee's been in that It could pot. be a couple of years. It probably could. But let's have another go. Yeah, get it down <laughs> you. I'm sure you've had worse. <laughs> I would say I would, I would give you some, but I know you don't drink coffee, yeah, do you? Yeah, it's caffeine free. Because when you heat the alkaloid in the coffee bean, it changes, the, sorry, when you heat the coffee bean, it changes the alkaloid and it, has, it releases chemicals. Mm -hmm. So it changes your, your mindset. Yeah. And I know you're big on anti-drugs any any yeah. you don't the mindset how everything. do you how do you low like, i mean this is my drug mm -hmm. my drug of choice how many are there two or maybe three sometimes none i try to go some days none whatsoever and i i the terrible thing i drink those go faster potions you've probably not heard of those no but you, you train yeah yeah you got a holland and barrett you've got all these pills and potions yeah or, you know, take this powder and you'll be like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but long story short, it's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> but again, because of the addiction, personality can kick into play. Oh, you're not drinking it? Nah, nah, that's, that's just, that's, mm -hmm. that's wrong. I watched one of your podcasts with some boy and I was surprised. People know you as a fighter, your, your marriages all over the papers. But you were talking about the mindset, the pineal gland, ayahuasca addictions i was quite surprised if i'm honest but some powerful stuff but before we get into that i always go back to the start of my guests where they grew up and how it all began grew up mm -hmm. so i'm born and bred from aldershot aldershot is the home of the british army it's right at the bottom of the country of the, the united kingdom um full of soldiers although it's um youngest of six lots of culture in my family i grew up the baby, so uh, mum and dad were probably stricter with the first lot, and then I was like, real, I can do whatever I want. Um, like I said, grew up with love, culture, lots of art. Didn't even realise, dad, I thought like dad was a bit of a hippie, although he was a tough guy. I remember when I was about 14, I was playing in the loft, and I saw some pictures of dad in the uniform. And I was like, what? You're a soldier? Oh, yeah, yeah. He didn't really, he didn't talk about it. And then he was, I found out he was the army boxing champion. And I, think, yeah, I was like playing with Luke Skywalker and He-Man back then and wanting to be like a tough guy like them. But then, oh, my dad's a tough guy, so I want to be like my dad. So I then, um, having been bullied as a kid, as I said earlier on, growing up on people like um, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Lee, Jean-Claude Van Damme, I wanted to be like my hero. So I was always looking for like the He-Man or the Luke Skywalker. And I hold on a minute, my dad's a proper hero. And I, you know, he was a paratrooper, so I wanted to join the army as a young man. Um, not really realizing what it's all about. I just want to be tough. You know, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to go and kill the world and stupid. Do you think that going to the army would have tried to make you tougher to protect yourself from bullies? Was that a sense of a, like so. an escape? Really, so. it's also, um, I found out, uh, got to be tricky, I'll say this. Someone I love very dearly was raped when she was a little girl. And it, when I found that out, it made me want to be um, like the Batman, again, a, a hero. Edward Woodward was going on at that time, the equaliser. I wanted to go and be a vigilante. And that's why I wanted to be tough. I wanted to protect people. I was also bullied myself. So, um, but rather than just put up with it, I would always look for ways to get out of it. I would escape into my imagination. How was your teenage years? Was you getting bullied in your teenage years or was that before? Oh, mate, I've been bullied my whole life. Um, I don't like the victim mindset. Um, and I, I refuse to go into that. I've never gone into that. I've always sought a, a way out because... I used to have a mind man, uh, like a, it was someone called an EFT coach, Emotional Freedom Therapy. Have you heard of NLP, hypnosis? It's a yeah, bit yeah. like that. Who would train me for my fights. And I... <laughs> what were we saying? About being bullied, was it your teenage years? Yeah. So I wanted to prove myself to 
the, the bullies. I wanted to fit in, I wanted acceptance, but guess what? I wasn't accepting myself. And I, I noticed all these times I was going off trying to fight the bully or fight, find a course to fight for somebody else. Ultimately, it was just, ultimately I needed to accept myself. Do you accept yourself now? Not entirely. And it's a work in progress. Yeah, I believe I always work on myself to the day we die. It's difficult to accept, but childhood trauma is a very powerful thing to, and it lasts a lifetime, to try and deal with some sort of pain or stress or heartache, whatever it is, people getting abused mentally, physically, it is hard to deal with. Did you ever get any counselling or therapy at a younger age? I've had loads of therapy. From a Lo young age? Yeah, loads. I, I remember what I was going to say then. I apologise that I, this is going to happen. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> we go backwards and forwards. I have a mind man and I would go to my mind man because um, I was being bullied. I was always continually being bullied. He used to train me for my, my fights to be like a better, to think better. Um, as much as you ha you'd have a coach in the gym to lift more weight, to punch faster, to, to run harder, um, you need to have your mind straight. So I was getting so horrend horrendously bullied when I hit the, the media um, in the last 10 years with my association with my ex-wife. Um, I, I felt horrendous, I didn't know how to cope with it. So. I, ha I had lots of therapy on really soul searching and finding out who what's going on because um, that's not nice to feel bullied. Mm -hmm. And even though at school I started martial arts to beat the bullies and I and I did and I became a tough guy, became a champion kickboxer and cage fighter. You know, with fifth, more than fifteen, I think probably twenty titles. Um, ultimately. I'm still getting bullied by the then, the then press, media, um, ex-wives, um, people on the street because of my negative association. The pen is definitely mightier than the sword and I found that in the media. Yeah. Was it your fact you struggle with that then? Yeah, it's horrendous. It's, it's, um, I love myself and believe in myself. Even though I said there's parts of myself that you don't entirely accept, you put on a facade and that there's, there's a balance, there's a mishmash of parts that I like and don't like. And now I'm le learning to shine a torch in those parts I don't like. And there's still, has you got bits about yourself you don't like? Oh yeah, millions, loads of stuff. And you're like, and um, do you live with regret? Yeah, not as much now, I had to. But you do? You yeah, do have of course, some, yeah, it so, pops uh, up from time to time. People say live with no regret. I'm like, I don't get that. No, because it's it, difficult. If I live with no regret, I wouldn't be who I am. Yeah. The more you change, when I started going through a change, the more my conscience grew and the more I realised how many people are hurt, the, the bad things yeah. that I've done. And people yeah. say, forgive and forget. It's, it's difficult because the brain stores no. everything. The forget brain's a sponge. Don't forget. Yeah, of course, never. How can, um, you, I mean, because yeah, that's irresponsible yeah. to me. Um, yeah. Cool, we got, when you go into these proper deep subjects, we, we've just been jovial yeah. five minutes before and we've gone <sighs> yeah but that's this is what people can relate to is real talk yeah. because even though you've had over 300 fights you've done some but have I I mean there were competitions yeah I've what does that mean had, I've heard just I, talk about that when I've you only say had, that I've only had what I'd say real fight they're competitions mm -hmm. I mean I like, like I could get knocked out but I'm not going to get killed well I, I could yeah, potentially it's dangerous you could potentially yeah. I mean I could get but it's unlikely mm -hmm. I mean how many there's not many deaths in yeah. but I'm trained, I'm prepared, I know it's, it's a competition. A fight, I mean a real fight, it's in a war on the street. You know, that's something different. Yeah. You know, someone, what's that over there? What's that over there? Who is that? Hmm? But I just stabbed yeah, you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, that's a fight. And you've got to have your wits about you the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's, I'm not a fighter. Did you think when you've done all the martial arts that would take away your pain? I thought so, because if you're tough, one thing that I've recently, I'm 45 years young. How young are you? 36. 36, you young bastard. <laughs> 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 but how young are you in here? I'm oh, 21. Well, yeah. I'm all right at being 45. Yeah. I mean, um, I've, I've how the fuck you still got your head of hair? I eat well. 
even though I've done lots of sex, drugs and rock and roll, I'm now all about longevity and health mm. and balance. And I do the 80-20 rule. 80% good and 20% a bit naughty. Probably less than that even. Probably more like 5%. So you're still strict with your eating and stuff? Yeah. I mean, not mega strict. If I want a bar of chocolate, I'll have a bar of fish mm -hmm. and chips, I will eat them. But Yeah. So see, you came through when you started your fighting, doing competitions and stuff. Were you still feeling... Were you, were you depressed at a younger age? Um, I think it was... I was driven. I was driven. I, I said I was bullied, um, but I also had a massive imagination to overcome. I, although some people, you could be motivated in two ways, by the pain or by the pleasure. I wasn't so much motivated by the pain of getting myself out of a hole. I was motivated and inspired by being great and amazing, like my heroes. And I was, that's what I, where I saw myself. I focused on the positivity. And it, it's equally, there are times when, like I remember having a boxing trainer and he'd tell me, you're your shit, your crap. You need to do this. I'm like, <sighs> felt terrible. Did you like getting punched? No. Because I had someone on the show as well. I don't know if it was Richie Horsley. He was a street fighter. I'm not sure if it was him. But he used, someone says they used to like getting punched, but it was a sense of self-harming. Oh, I can tell about that in a second, self-harming. But um, if you ask me, sitting here now, as Alexander Reed, not Alex Reed, Alexander Reed, um, I don't like getting punched, but we all, I'm sure, I don't know what you know about alter egos yeah. and putting on different masks. There's a different Alex Reed, Alexander Reed. Uh, but, uh, a, a, it goes a little bit crazy. I detest violence. I'm scared of it. And it's really weird. I've, I've done wonder this. I'm like, I've become somebody else. Yeah. And um, yeah, he can be a little bit crazy. Is that to take you away from your own method of thinking to be a different character? I don't know. Because you're not secure. You say who am not. I? Who am I? Exactly. I don't know. So the person who you, you says earlier that you weren't sort of... Because it's still me. Yeah, it's of different. Course. It's different versions yeah. of me. Um, You've not got kids, have you? Yeah, too. Oh, so you're, you're talking to the bank manager mm -hmm. and you want to get a massive business loan. You're going to talk very differently than you're going to talk to your, your kids. How old are they? Uh, ten and nine. Ten and nine. Well, maybe when they're even younger. Yeah, you're going to talk a little bit silly and to, yeah. to communicate properly. So you become a different, you become dad. Yeah, different faces are different places. Yeah, yeah. And that's, so you think differently. Mm -hmm. So you, it's not appropriate for you to be dad in the the bank manager meeting. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, who are you now? Who, who makes you happy? What character? What name? Alexander, Alex, who makes you happy yourself? Who are you yourself then? Are you still trying to figure that out? Um I know I understand who I am. Yeah. I understand who I am. I've done enough soul searching and had enough pain, toil and soul. What it? What I think the question was. I I often wonder who who are you? We're all of these people mm -hmm. at different times. If you're down the pub, if you were getting high, you used to get high. Yeah, it's a very different person to the person you are now. Yeah, that's the mask on. That's the loud James daft. But it's still you. Yeah, of course. But but that you're saying you think that's still part of you. Oh, so yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when you say mm -hmm. who is is are you denying that are you denying that part of you now? No, I can't. You can't because that's made us who I am today. So there's a part of you that desires to get high. Yeah, every day. Right. Yeah. So that's intriguing. So if you mm -hmm. really want to get a high, why you, is it unhealthy to deny that part of you? No, it's unhealthy because I know how depressed I can get by doing it. I don't believe it's natural yes. to get away from a conscience frame of mind. I don't believe it's natural to sit at a house for three, four days full of cocaine and, and alcohol. Sure. Being loud and daft and giving your energy away for for what, really? It's escapism. But I've got that. I've got that. Listen, um, but th this is why I said the regret mm -hmm. actually serves its purpose because... I've done those things as well. I don't know if, well, to what level. Um, I mean, I've done lots of cocaine and drugs in my past. Even when you're fighting? Uh, yeah, done this. Not not while I'm fighting, mm -hmm. but I mean, uh, in that in those time periods. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, when I'm fighting, I'm completely disciplined. I've got a mission. Shaolin monk, you know, clean, healthy, and then it's mm -hmm. party time. But that side... 
How well do you feel after it though? When you took coke, how long? What? How did you feel after that? When it's the party, when the lights come down and yeah. you have to go home? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's for me. It was. I, I. Let's talk about the self harm. Um, oof. this is a, a big subject. What age did you start? I don't self harm, uh, or do I? What is self harm? Self harm for me was accepting free fights and not training for them because it was the most peaceful thing. I just, <laughs> this is tricky. Let me rewind, go backwards and I'll go forwards. So I'll go really fast. I meet someone called Katie Price. Um, this is, I was seduced by the whole rigmarole of fame. Um, didn't really understand it. I always wanted to be famous and I held my hands up. I love the pat on the back, the cheer of a crowd. That's why I like train so hard, get up to go run in the morning to look good for my fights, to go to acting school, to learn my lines and to, to continually work at it. I want, the, they want that adulation. And so all of a sudden that got warped and twisted by fame. I didn't even know what a paparazzi was before I went into the Big Brother house. I wasn't even going to go into the Big Brother house because I never wanted to be famous for being famous. And all of a sudden, I, it, I the reason I believe I won Big Brother from being the, the 40 to 1 odds to win and getting the highest vote ever in the history of Big Brother, 66 or 7%, 20 million people, was because I was innocent. I mean, I went in to, 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 to try and win it, but I wasn't, I went in more to show who I really was. Yeah, but you've got a vulnerability about you. And that's the person that people saw, that innocence. Yeah. And then guess what? I come out and I'm like, I'm swallowed up by the whole celebrity thing. And it walks you like a, a line or a, a crack pipe. I was addicted to the fame pipe. Yeah, but again, it's all an illusion, isn't it? It's, it's, it's all fake and bullshit. Because a part of me craved that at one point in my life, and then you realise it's it's all bullshit. The more attention I get, the more private I want to be now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And for you, who's obviously struggled with childhood trauma as well, and um, battled with some addictions, some self harming, to be in front of that limelight, was that? Did that? There must have been a part where you enjoyed it as well. Yeah, of course, of course, I did. Um, you say it's all a lie. I was, I call, I, I've said this so many times, I called the celebrity years, the LSD years. I wasn't taking LSD, but it, I was everywhere. It, my life was, I couldn't walk down the street. Everyone knew who I was. And part of me loved that. Another part was like, scary, really scary. Like everyone knows who you are, but you feel alone. It's, what's that all about? Yeah. It's like a world within a world. Yeah. And so... I remember the marriage, I remember, I'll go for, I don't really want to talk about her, we can go there later, there's lots mm. of ups and downs with Katie. I remember briefly, just before it finished, I wish you weren't famous and I wish you didn't have any money, then we could have a proper relationship. And then it broke down and guess what, I got off the fame pipe and I got back on it with the mother of my child, Chantelle Houghton, who also won Celebrity Big Brother, but... Don't do it. She's just like Katie. Well, but you could trust her. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, maybe you can make a few quid as well. Oh, like the fame pipe's coming back. <laughs> and I, I jumped on it. Yeah. And guess what? It's, it's a dichotomy and a juxtapose because she's one of the best things that's ever happened in my life. I have my daughter, Dolly, because of Chantel. Mm -hmm. But there's lots of sadness there. I can't, I'm not allowed to go into why. And I just want to say I absolutely love Dolly and I love you to pieces and... There's a reason, I'm going to go back to your original question, why I started fighting again. And I always fight for, because I wanted to be strong and big and tough and be a hero. And I took fights because I was getting such bullying and harassment in courts, in the press. Walking down the street, I was getting abuse. On a building site, people would shout things down about Roxanne, my alter ego. And other, well, we don't even need to go there, but I'm sure you know all about that. Yeah. And I was like, right, come on in, you know. Stupid. So I, I was doing a lot of drugs then. And, and I thought to myself, this isn't me. I was doing them for escapism. So that, that's another way of self-harm. And I decided to get off the drugs by doing another thing, another drug fighting, without training. I mean, I trained a tiny bit, not just to like make the weight, 
you know, that's hardly... Yeah. Do you know what? Because being punched in a cage in front of thousands of people with another well-trained killer was less painful. It, it just shut all the noise off. It was scary. This guy's scary. He's going to hurt me. I don't, I don't want to get hurt. I'm not wanting to get hurt. But it was peace. Because all the noise was turned off from the media and if I, was, I could just focus on doing what I do. Turn off everything else. All I had to do was focus on... Um, it was like therapy. But it wasn't. I was basically self-harming. Yeah. How was that life then, straight away when you, you get through into it? Was it, did you handle it well or did you think this is what everything I've wanted and then you realised, wait a minute, this isn't what I wanted? Was there a time when you you decided, right, this isn't for me? Yeah, uh, listen, I remember the whole um, the whole Roxanne thing when um, uh, Kate did the, the book launch Um and she wanted to sort of dress up as girls. And I'm like, <laughs> why? I'm like, yeah, we laugh. Yeah. And everyone laughs. Why is it funny? It's not funny for me because yeah. it was it was a private thing that, and it, it became um, a, a kind of a laughing stock in many respects. And I lost deals because of it. But as a brand, I mean, but I'm not a brand. Well, I am a brand to some, to some degree. And I'm like, so it's taken me diligent work over years and years just to sort of bury all that stuff. And I'm not denying it. Um, I you think you were through under the bus then to promote a book? Not just a book. So I remember, oh, like, um, I'm telling you the story. Um, I just won an Alpha Male Cage fight. Yeah, I'm a hero. And, um, and Kate was there. And I got, so I got punched on the way to the cage. I was hated. Isn't that funny? And I won it. <laughs> we went home and we're all partying all drunk um, and she's uh, she's seen pictures of me on Facebook dressed up as a bird oh my god you do that I said yeah <laughs> oh, I've got to do it so alright okay big deal <laughs> did it had some fun she took some pictures um, I consented I consented to those pictures but there was nothing sexual just dressed up as a bird cool fun following week we're at Simon Cow's 50th that's, I'm not trying to drop that in like that sounds. Name like, that strange, sounds. Yeah. But the reason why I say that is because the world's press were there. Someone gets drunk, shows the world's press all these pictures of me. I remember Piers Morgan coming up to me and sort of like saying, "It's all right, mate. I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> it's not not fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not fine. What the, I mean, look, that's that's a complete invasion of what the hell? We but you are very open about that stuff. Uh, let me explain it. Let me explain it. I'm just coming there. Mm. So the following week after that, she's on Graham Norton in front of, I think, 20 million people live on BBC One, right? And the day before that, she's called a horse, Jordan's Crossdresser, right? And um, I'm like, babe, I've got to say something. If I don't say something, it's all it's blown. I'm like, you've orchestrated this and created this. And I'm like, all right, okay. So I'm sitting there with my manager watching her on, on um, live on Graham Norton. Yeah, he's having a whale of a time. It's great. Whips, chains, all the whole... You know what they say? One door closes, another... Slime shut. Yeah. You heard me say that before. Yeah. I've I, I watched another podcast today yeah. where he says that. Yeah. Yeah. And how did and you... I, I went it? along with it. I went along with it because I was like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Do I just like deny it uh, this is a big thing what, what does it matter what does it matter and it, it became and at the time it was kind of liberating to some degree and I did go along with it but I was like inside this isn't cool I'm not I am not cool with this did you feel bullied again absolutely I felt raped absolutely raped in every single way it's the most disgusting despicable and it, go, it goes on I mean it's gone on for years I'm not gonna I'm going here now it's gone on so long, um, which is why I've got a high court injunction against her. Because in, uh, I've been threatened by her publicly on things on shows like Loose Women this morning. Um, she, I've got a whole stack of evidence where she's like threatened to destroy me publicly, a time and time again, because of these sick, disgusting videos that she's got of me, which I've not even well, I didn't consent to didn't have any even knowledge they've been taken and how the hell can you have these videos i mean surely that would be and if you've had if they were taken in 2010 why are they still cut being uh, reappearing um up to 2018 still is yeah, that not revenge I, porn hello hello 
Mm-hmm. And what, you know, this is beyond disgusting. And that's and, just all getting... And I get, I get, I got threatened two weeks ago with someone saying that they, someone of her staff have got the videos on social media. Have they been released anywhere? Uh, that on, in 2018, Kate showed an audience of 40 sex footage of myself. What? Just a couple of, just not long ago? I had four witnesses come forward. I have high court injunction. That's criminal. So you still that's criminal. Are you still living on edge then? And 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 yes, this is why it's just it it it's made me feel suicidal. I have therapy over this. And it, it um and I'm talking about it because it's fucking disgusting that this is allowed to go. And it's someone who promotes anti bullying and someone who promotes um trolling has trolled and I've got all the trolling evidence and I, I, I wasn't even going to go you just you've got me off on one now it, I didn't even want to talk about this the reason why I talk if I talk about her it's all of a sudden oh your whole career is anything to do with her it's all it's, it's only because of her hold on a minute I've got my first biggest TV show a week before I met her and I had a I'd, look understandably she highlighted some aspects but it's not the sort of highlighting I ever want how did you meet Facebook what was that? Facebook. Fuck's sake. Yeah. Who sent who after end request? Uh, my, my mate was training, was training her. She was into, her and Pete were into cage fighting. And when they split up, she wanted to get a cage fighter. Mm-hmm. And that's how it all started. And then 10 years later, you're still here? Yeah. Listen, I mean, that's, that's, I, I, I don't... Op- there must have been good points as well, though. There must have been happy times because times. you got married, didn't you? They did, I did, I know. Uh, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have yeah. you never spoken to... I regret that. To I regret that. Getting married? I regret that. Why? I remember saying on my wedding day to my mum. Look, she's not even... She's totally ignoring me. She's not even... Well, I'm not even here. What's, what's going on? You know, she didn't... It's like it was just all for show. Did you get married for the fame kind of thing and not love? I didn't. Did you really love her? I thought so. I thought so. But did I? Knowing what love is now. And now I have a wonderful partner, Nicola. And I really know what love is all about. And it's about give and take and it's about compromise and it's about understanding communication. And there are conditions. It's not completely unconditional. Um, not, I mean, not the unconditional love I have for my child, but there's, I'm learning to break those conditions down. Mm-hmm. You speak about, I know we spoke about the cross dressing and stuff like that. You says it was happy dressing, but is it, was that again, <laughs> happy dressing. was that again, <laughs> escapism? Was that you escaping your true self to be some, another character? I guess. Was it? I guess it's uh, it's like I don't. It's funny. I had this conversation with Nicola the, the other just the other day. I, I don't have the desire to do that. If I want to, I'm not anti it. It feels good. Do it. I mean, it's like um, I've always been open minded in that respect. I don't. Look, I'm not. Don't look the best looking bird. So, <laughs> <laughs> what's your girl name? I don't know. Mate, give me one. <laughs> what's his girl name? That kid's only doesn't know. He's probably named me as well, him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't. I don't feel like a Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, so as you think, because you've been very open as well about what sexuality is. Listen, I don't care what you are, grey, straight, green, pink. Great. I don't. I don't care who you are. It's not a label. You've been very open about it, experimenting as well with other men. Was that again try to figure out who you are? No, was it just a case of have fun, try it, and see where it goes? I don't, I don't feel the need to. I, I get it, but I mean, for when you're, when you're young, you want to. You need. This is the problem I've had. You need to fit in. I feel in society, and I've never fit in. I've always been. Um, I've never been exactly ostracised. I've been invited into cliques all the time, and I tend to not go there. Uh, people want me in their cliques. Um, I'm like. I think, actually, weirdly, that's what kind of won me for brother. 
because people saw that they started to form cliques in a in a small community and um you i was like always trying to be the consummate diplomat always try to fit in um become something yeah. that you're not to fit in with other no, people no, to no. get acceptance i have done that i mm-hmm. have done that but not now I, that's one thing i have done that I th- I wanted to be a fighter, to be tough, to protect. Sorry, no, yeah. okay. to to protect people and to to be the the champion, the good guy, the yeah. man. And um, did is that wanting to fit in? You yeah. I mean, I funny. I didn't really fit in with the fighters because I'm not a fighter. I mean, even though I've had over. I always say 300 fighters. It's, it's at least that. It's had more than 200 kickboxing. But you were right. proper well respected in the fight game. I yeah. think people forget that. You yeah. were proper respected. Yeah. I know someone arranged a fight. There was a big fight, massive fight, but somebody pulled out and you were already sitting in the crowd, couple of champagne, that was cu- stupid. couple of bottles of champagne deep that was and stupid. you stood up to the plate, drunk. That, that was stupid. That was ridiculous. I should not have done that. I, that's, that was the stupidity of me that I didn't take the... The career. And get that was actually trying to fit in in some respect. Do you know why I did that? Right. So in some respect, I did. I wanted to be macho. Look at me. I'm bloody tough. Bloody hard as nails. Listen, I'm a paratroop, ex paratroop, but I'm scared of heights. I don't like being cold. I don't like being shouted at. Why did you join the paras? Don't want to jump out of airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> Shut my eyes. Why did you join the paras? <laughs> uh, to be double hard. Be a double hard bastard. To try bastard. and toughen you up. Um, image. It's acceptance. Look at me. If it, for me, if 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 I could prove that I'm tough, um, and I didn't really fit in there, if I could prove I'm tough, then I'd be accepted. People leave me alone. Might makes right. Did that work? And not at the time. Not at the time. Not I've, physical, but you I, seem as if you've been bullied a lot. Yeah, mentally. I've learnt a million percent. I've learnt. Um, all of my pain and experiences have, have, have showed me that I am enough. And it's accepting that, even though there's parts of me I still haven't accepted and, and not entirely comfortable with. But it's, um, I'm 45. Um, I like to think I'm, I'm I've passed the, the peak and I'm on the way down to fully happiness full happiness of like accepting myself I'd love to be in a complete peaceful harmonious do you meditate or anything I do even exercises I do I do hard chi kung have you heard of that no it's basically chai chi on steroids okay Uh, it's it's a bit like yoga breathe pranic breath Um, do lots of yoga and it's not so much the bending and twisting yoga is more than just bending and twisting it's the whole spiritual side you you really deep into your pineal gland Mm -hmm. When you open up, you do breathing, chanting, um, meditation. You almost open up different dimensions. Mm-hmm. And it's like, um, you've seen Lord of the Rings, putting on the yeah. ring. Yeah. And you go into, you could do a line of coke and put on the ring. You know, the ring, the ring. No, we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do, you can get all these natural, you, these chemicals yeah. naturally mm-hmm. if you learn how to harness them. See, this is why I don't drink coffee, alcohol, take drugs. I believe you can get to a higher state from meditation and breathing yeah. techniques. I asked you a question about um, how many, your podcasts, you, you're kicking it. Yeah, you're you'll be number one soon. And you're, 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 you're confident. And I said, yeah. what's your secret? What, what's, the, what's the method? Clean living, I believe in myself. I've cut out all the negatives but, for me personally. But, um, cl- but clean livings, that's, yeah. that's over, uh, I'm the cleanest person in the world. I'm really yeah. pure, I'm happy. But what's mm-hmm. the actual... This is an addiction. Minerals. This is an addiction. You love it. Yeah. I'm mm. addicted to becoming the biggest and the best. Do you know what I mean? This is an addiction. Now I get it. Yeah. Now I get it. This is why we're constant on the move, getting guests. I've caught out, I was like an octopus. It was either drink, drugs, sex, gambling. I was all over the place, cut all them out, found my lane, done something that I loved. Now there was a time I loved taking drugs. There was a time I loved gambling, but it just became a mess after a certain while you burn all your bridges with everyone. You become a compulsive liar. I cut all that shit out. I found my lane. I make documentaries. I'm creating one of the biggest podcasts in the UK. There's no way I could be doing this if I was still doing that other stuff. You're creating one of the... You're creating one of... Can you reword that, please? 
I don't know what it says. You're cre- you said I'm creating one of the biggest podcasts. Yeah. I'm creating the mm-hmm. biggest podcast. Yes. I already believe I'm number one. But I work as if I'm number two. And again, that's my addiction. Ah, you work as if you're number two. Yeah, because there's always somebody behind you trying to take over. So, uh, Do you know what? I, I've grown up on um, fighting and uh, my... my uh, the people who got me into uh, boxing were Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank. Two legends. Probably a little bit just before your time. Mm-hmm. Just probably a little bit younger because you're 10 years younger. But no, no, Chris Eubank, um, he was like he never felt he was good enough. And that's what drove him. And I said earlier on, just, just, just different motivation, inspirational factors which can drive people. And I, I can get that. So you always felt like you're number two. He, he felt the same way, mm-hmm. which what drove him. Because you can get to the point where you're the champ and you're on top of the world yeah. and you lose your hunger. Yeah. That's what happened to me in my fighting. You look at Conor McGregor, you look at Tyson Fury at yeah. this time, I always use Tyson Fury. He won all the yeah. belts, won all the money, yep. and then slipped back into his darkest times of his life. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you, you create a finishing line for yourself that like you might have wanted to be world champion, have all the fame. You got that, you realised, wait a minute, I'm still insecure. I'm still a miss here. Oh, man, it, my, it's, like I said, the, the whole fallout of celebrity, what it does to you. I mean, it's, it's, it's taken a few lives. It's taken um, that Mike Falassus last year yeah the, it's a shame man the guy and, from um, the girl from Love Island the presenter yes and then beautiful the, girl as well yeah yeah um, do you think if you'd never done experience to bully me or younger you could have potentially took your own life gone through all the trauma from the papers what they were saying about you you kind of understood it a bit more do you think I could have what, not be here yeah if you never experienced it when you were younger because of the pain and trauma that you've got now? Never thought of that. I've actually, that's an interesting, very interesting question. I need to ponder on that. I wonder, I have to wonder, how, how, why am I still here? I think about the, what Mike, when people, what, what he went through, and Nicola, my girl, she's saying, you've had much worse than that. I'm not, not oh, thanks, Nicola, great. <laughs> mm. um, how, I'm, you know, you've got to take your hat off how you're still here. And I get people every day, literally every day, message me for support, which makes me feel a bit like a champion for these people who have been bullied, people with revenge porn, people with uh, being trolled, which is the most ironical thing. For and I've got I'm being trolled by someone who's creating an anti-trolling charity with Harvey's Law. Um, they, long story short, they give me strength. Actually, maybe all this pain and suffering is is been good because if I can help these people, and yeah. I do. It's it's really weird. You you can often help someone else a lot better than you can help yourself. Oh, in percent, yeah. You're like, and you you're like, well, I can do it for me. Why can't I do it for me? And I, and I, you end up talking to yourself. Come on, Reed. If you did it for them, you, yeah. and people come to me for advice, and I'm like, why are they coming to me for advice? And I, and it just comes out naturally. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I do know stuff. Yeah, of course you do. You see people because you've still kicked on. People get depressed and don't leave the house. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So what happens is all this shit that we've been through in the past, I've got to thank my addictions as well because then... What you're doing now, what you're talking about, yeah. how you're talking, it's interesting, yeah. I'm finding it fascinating. Yeah. Sure, and everybody else will yeah, watch this. Yeah, so people, now I can... You, sometimes you've got to go to the darkest places to find your light. I believe I've been to hell, not just once, but in many occasions, <sighs> including yourself. You're clearly still fighting. You clearly still want to be here. So we've clearly got more to give life. I always say it, if you've got air in your lungs, you have got something to give. But still trying to figure it out. What as a podcast? Man, I've got so much to give. This yeah. is why, and I've got people who love me, and that's the thing that keeps me going. When I feel, I mean, I, like I said, I have therapy every week, um, because I had silly, I've had horrible, silly thoughts. Do you get PTSD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. I've not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't talk about it, but yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. Um, I have, I used the pain to, for creative, as an actor, it's brilliant because I'm an actor. Um, it's great, give me the pain, you, you know, because you, you've got raw minerals and emotions to call upon to be able to channel. <laughs> but it's not great when you're not acting. <laughs> 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 uh, do you yeah. think you don't get jobs because of your past? 
yeah. who you're involved with. A million percent. Do you think so? I don't think. Do you think I know. You're being I, know or I, no, I don't think I know, which is why I started taking action against her in 2017. And and it, it's taken three years, four four years, four years of extreme abuse. Still? Four years. Why, and I, why and I, still though? To I this just day? because, and it's like, because I, I was like the, the scapegoat. It, the, I don't want any association with that woman. I don't think you, it will ever stop though. Like you're always going to be associated oh, somewhere. It down will, the it will. But in a, it will be like a distant, and I, I see it. Mm -hmm. I know you don't think, but I know. Because I know what's coming. Mm -hmm. and, and that gives me some, some peace. It's been hard to focus on uh, the law of attraction, the visualization, because that's what got me everything I got. Yeah. I've got, I've, I've achieved a lot, and I've also achieved, uh, drawn into my life a lot of crap, and I know why. I'm not. Um, my life has got a complete mix, as we speak, of absolute misery, and pain, and suffering. Um, there's one thing I can't really go into, which I, you might be able to draw what I'm talking about. Um, I could talk about that in a second, but the other one is my mother's um, uh, is suffering with Alzheimer's. And it's, it's, it's you, you have to learn, and having lo starting to lose people like yourself, we, we lose people around us, you yeah. start making you think about life. And mum's like, are you Alexander? I went, yes, mum. It's, it's, it's painful, and you, you see, people around you change and the other thing the other thing that is very sad um, which I can't talk about but you can draw your own conclusions I have become extremely adept at parental alienation and because of that I have formed my own association foundation um, the Bob Reed Foundation who's Bob Reed Bob Reed was my dad and um, again I can't tell you all about that either um, a loving, caring dad, grandfather, um, and absolute peace. And his number one quality, um, bar anything, went before he died, I said, what's, what's the best thing you could do? I could have kindness. It's all about kindness and compassion. So we help people. All the pain and suffering that I've had, I now help people. Um, predominantly fathers. It's probably about 90% fathers to mothers. But uh, mothers, fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers who don't get to see their, their children. And it makes me feel good. And it's this, the, the country is in such, well, not the world. Yeah, it's, some country, yeah. it's, so, it's so fucked up, mm -hmm. the, the, the injustice. And it's backwards. And it's a money-making scheme. Of course it is. And I'm, I'm fighting... I am, and I have an army for transparency. As you said, I can't even talk about what's really going on hmm. because there's high court reporting restrictions. Um, How many restrictions do you have on you? Um, Loads? Uh, not mega, not mega. There's two big ones. One with lovely old ex-wife and one with... <laughs> one, uh, this not, it's not even that bad. I mean, let's, I mean I've, what's she going to do? Sue me? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but... I don't really want to talk about it, to tell you mm -hmm. the truth. Tried to be, I, for so many years, the whole reason why I, I, I decided to take a stance against Katie mm -hmm. Price was because I just had my head down. That's the person I am. Head down, keep moving forward. Forget about that crap. It didn't work out. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it just kept coming back. Okay. Again and again. She's still a high profile C name though. Cancer. So never, it's, it's proper cancer. You're never going to get away from it. I need to cut the cancer out mm -hmm. and eradicate it. But how do you do that then? Um, well. Stop reading the papers and uh, watching the I news. I can't. Because it's irresponsible. I think about that. I mean, uh, you know about RAS, the reticular activating system. No. If I mention a red Ferrari, you'll probably start oh, seeing... You'll see NLP, because just yeah. in your mind, yeah. yeah. And it's the same sort of thing. I mean, um, fortunately... But it's out of sight, out of mind, yeah. Out of, but I have to also... I'm in two minds. I don't... I mean, I, I'm still in legal proceedings with uh, Kate. Um, and... There's uh, just lies. He's a liar, absolute liar. And I like don't mind saying it, a sociopath. And I can prove it. Um, and long story short, 
at some point you have to take a stance just to stop being abused and offended. Now, at the same time, not offended, abused and affect your business. So I'm like, and we all have a joke and a laugh people about Alex Reed and stuff. And I'm like, it's very funny. And I'm, I can have, I'm an ex-paratrooper. I mean, like, there's nothing sacred. You can say any joke you want. But when it's stopping you put food on the table, that's when you're like, hmm, that's not cool. I'm not getting the parts I want, you know. I'm starting to. And actually, last year, I worked seven times. Two films, uh, two plays, a pantomime, uh, a sitcom, and an advert. Was it Vin Diesel who told you to get into acting? Oh, blimey, you've done your homework. Yeah, fucking right. That I'm was it. the best on the, in the on game. The, on the set of, um, uh, I was Tom Hanks' body double. Yeah, that's right. And Tom Hanks did more press-ups than you? You remember, you, that's well, he beat me. Yeah, he was, yeah, bugger. But the, the, Do you I enjoy f- acting? What is it you Love enjoy it. about acting? Are you getting uh, away from it, It's you? so cathartic. When you get to have to understand the emotions of someone, what they're going through, mm-hmm. and you have to really get into them, you start to understand yourself. And then you really understand what you've hidden. What, why are you doing these behaviours? Why, why do I want to go and get high? Do I really want to go and get high? Is that going to make me feel... Hmm. What do I really want at this point? You know, why do I want to go and fight this guy? Why do I want to do anything? Why do I want to get up in the morning? How much drugs did you used to take? Um, it was just mainly cocaine. Um, Weed? A bit, a bit. I mean, I've tried, um, I've done the, the, I've done some LSD. Um, I would call that a med- more of a medicine though. No. Yeah. But then I did, I did uh, DMT. What did you think of DMT? Um, you smoke it in a crack pipe? 15, 15, 20 years ago, yeah. So that's before it became westernised. Yeah, and, it, and I did it mixed it with cocaine as a junkie. <laughs> it's not clever. It's not clever. Oh, dear head's fucked. I mean, it was, it was great. I saw uh, different things. And I've done also done the acacia ceremony. Acacia, done ayahuasca? That, okay, so acacia is Egyptian uh, ayahuasca. Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty funky. What did you see? Have you seen 300? Yeah. You know when the, 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 the spirits... Butler? The spirits, the the the, the sages, mm-hmm. they give the lady, the girls, the the priestesses, the drink. That's acacia. It's um, yeah. All these plant medicines go back hundreds of thousands of years. I'm still unsure though. I'm still unsure. I, I, it's, it's a weird experience. I'm still unsure, but they kept. I don't trust anyone. They kept telling me to surrender. I didn't surrender completely. I know your feeling when I smoke changa, which is it, it produces people who don't. I'm sure people who are re- watching this and your your mm. guys will know about this because they know about you. But um, DMT, dimethyltryptamine, we all produce it naturally. It's in our penile gland, and we actually have synapses which run back from our third eye right back to our brain into mm. our to allow you to see. So when you perceive instinct, um, perception, shut your eyes. That's your penile gland working. Because you know, I'm sure you know all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So long story short, um, there's certain substances you can take. Um, ayahuasca, acacia, changa. There's lots of mushrooms. They produce, you can produce this naturally, which is what I've been doing um, with my qi kung, with my breathing, learning how to, um, I'm big into Cossack training, Russian martial arts, Istama, and the spetsnaz, they do this. They go into a dark cave, mm-hmm. you know, for... For, or just in the darkness and you start producing after about four days DMT yeah the DMT and yeah, you can seven, see stuff seven days that's where they go that's where they say the seat of the soul is which is connected to the pineal gland that's where you get your higher connection your higher powers we've all got a gut feeling we've all got intuition but what happens is I've heard you speak about it before fluoride which is in your water which is in your toothpaste is which, it in this which kills the pineal gland probably could be the plastic yeah it's, it's tricky because what do we do this is why I talk about drugs but, uh, drugs are everywhere yeah how do we stop them? Yeah. But that's why a lot of people seem to be going more plant plant based now. Same. Are I'm you a flex- are you flex- vegan? Flexitarian. Just whatever you want, chicken, just I, eat that. Listen, I I I mean I eat a bit of meat. I I've, I've cut right. We know down. that. We, know <laughs> <laughs> we do know that. <laughs> Are you, being, are you being saucy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to get in there. Sammy's coming out to play. <laughs> Samantha. Yeah. No, no, what for you? You want to play? Yeah? You want to play? 
Uh, so, if we're in prison. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Um, if we're in prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were we talking about now? We're in prison. Okay. You're going to be my mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Is, um, so, uh, how could you go right down the. You can go right down the rabbit hole with this shit, can't you? Where well, we're constantly searching. We're constantly looking, closing to me this day. I'm constantly searching. I've, I'm getting um, Jordan Peterson on at the end of the year in December. Biggest psychologist in the world, but yet had a nervous breakdown. Do you think we can search too much and forget to fucking live? Forget to have fun, laugh? Everything becomes so serious now. Do you not think? Amen. Yeah. Yeah, a billion percent. Have fun. Just yeah. stop, stop. Uh, analysis paralysis mm -hmm. just sometimes just do it go and fuck up yeah it's what living's about I mean ultimately it doesn't to me I get I kind of get what Jim Carrey says it doesn't matter yeah it doesn't matter because guess what him is crazy now we hey they're portraying him as crazy now I think he is a bit crazy but we all are but what's what's normal yeah exactly did you watch the Truman show of course yeah of course um, yeah but you've, got, you've got to live life sometimes and yeah. just it's not worry about the consequences. Find balance. It's tricky because I wake up, my demons come to me at about four o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep and I'm like, oh, I must be doing this, I must be doing that. I'm driven and I feel like I'm not doing what I should be really be doing. Do you take medication? No. No. Not I've, any Valium or anything? I don't take Joints. any of those, no. I smoke a bit of weed occasionally, but I don't, I try not to, I'm not anti it, just for my testosterone. And my swimmers, and um, um, me and my lovely lady. Um, interestingly, I, I, I smoked a tiny bit of weed last year, um, not not crazy amounts. I take CBD and all that stuff. Um, in November, I had my semen tested. It was said I had fifteen thousand. That's infertile. Fifteen. You should have twenty million to be considered. Fuck's sake. So I, um, with the power of my mind and research and studying, and I'm big on studying, I, I increased my semen by taking Vedic medicine. I was taking things like Binginko Boba, which is a good for your mind, Chinese medicine, but it's really bad for your balls. So it's knowing the combinations. Um, I would do hard Kung yoga, I would stop hot saunas, um, smoking weed, didn't even smoke it really that yeah. much. Caffeine, terrible. Um, I increased from 15,000 to 77 million in February, so in three months, which is like, I'm yeah. the spermonator. Yeah, got your shit back, you got your um, mojo back. Mate, right. and it's so, it's, it's but, you know, I, like I said, I go on the 80 20 rule. 80% bad, 20% mm -hmm. naughty. What about steroids? But I did, I, then I went 100% good. Steroids, I've done all those. I'm not anti steroids mm -hmm. as well. I've talked about this. Um, um, I, it mucks around with endocrinology. Um, what do you want to know about steroids? I don't know fuck all about them, to um, be honest. How's it with the mindset? How uh, is it with your... They're addictive. Your I, sperm, I they're shit addictive like that. Because it's like, not they're terrible for your sperm. Yeah. They'll um, shrink your balls and shit. Mm, they do, because what happens is you're producing testosterone. You know, you're you're getting artificially. So, hey, we'll have a holiday. We don't need to work anymore. And if you keep... People do it all the time. Uh, listen, if I had a massive film where I was going to have a Arnold Schwarzenegger... I'd, Pros and out cons. I don't want to ever take those things, ever take those things again, because I don't want to. I everything you take, what oxidizes us. That's why we have antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Oxidization make, means rust, corrode. I want to live, I want to live as long as possible and healthy. I don't want to be like, oh, look mm -hmm. at me. I want to be yes, I'm strong. Mm -hmm. So steroids, all good. If, I mean, <sighs> so pros and cons. Yeah. Seeing you at the Big Brother house, you were you sort of getting bullied as well with Vinnie Jones kind of picking on you a bit. Did you feel that as well? Oh, a million percent. Um, I think I've, I've said this before. Um, he, I liked Vinnie and he was a bit of a bully. I remember going in one day, um, I come in and he, he bullied me about something in the in the bedroom. So I just walked out for, do you know what? I'm all right, I can do with this. Just take yourself away from the situation. And I made him a cup of tea. He goes, Vinny, would you like a cup of tea? Went in there again and, just, and then walked out. 
And I, I didn't even remember doing this. The only reason I remember this, this happening is because Boy George was a fan and he said how brilliant Alex Reed and how English he was. You're English. Mm-hmm. James English. <laughs> James, James mm-hmm. English. But that made me think, and he was a bully. And I remember one day he, 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 was, he was, I thought, you're a, you're a bully. And I, he, 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 he mouthed off at me, so I switched, properly switched. I'm, Why are you mother? Are you fucking, what the fuck you know, fucking, it's fucking, 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 it's right, it's right, it's right. And then he was like, then he was nice as pie to me. Yeah. It seems like a nice guy as well. Yeah. It seems like a nice guy. He's been on the TV quite a lot the last couple of years. Remember, they played for Wimbledon. They were fucking proper. But he, listen, I, I don't dislike him. I think he's great. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, mm-hmm. it's what he was. Just trying to try, try to be the king of the castle kind of thing. Yeah. Try to be the alpha male. But then, he can be the alpha male. I don't need mm-hmm. to be the alpha male. Yeah. How was it for you when you won that? Did you realise the response you would get? No. No, it was unreal. It was it was like a cool LSD. I had that, I mean, for those probably who's never done LSD, it's like being on a different wavelength. It's a different dimension. You don't know what planet you're on. I was like, what's going on? This isn't... I'm, I was everywhere. I mean, I'd always done a bit of celebrity stuff. I was just doing a TV show, literally just before I met Katie Price. And uh, I'd done soaps. Hollyoaks. Uh, I'd Hollyoaks, and I've done done films, and um, uh, did My Hero. I did all sorts. I had a whole showreel of acting jobs and modelling, and yada yada yada. And I, I, I got a bit of notoriety from my fighting. I, at that point, I'd had three hundred fights. So I mean, that was that was ten years ago. So I don't know how many fights I've had since then. You know, that was ten years ago. I'd had three hundred fights then. So all around the world, and I'm like, yeah. Do you miss the fighting? <laughs> Different person. I think about, I remember seeing, I'm sure you maybe seen the thing of Mike Tyson where he's got, um, he's got his belt so several years ago. What do these mean? Nothing. I mean, nothing. It's like, what's this all about? And he's thrown them. They mean nothing to me. And he's just about to go and have a fight. <laughs> yeah, this year. <laughs> yeah. Next month, I think. Yeah, yeah. There you he go. looks fucking great though for 53, 54. But I think they're taking, um, Stem cells. Damn right, motherfucker. Yeah. Stem cells are the way forward. Yeah. Listen, I, and, I, and I know about performance enhancing drugs. Mm. Um, they're, they're rife in sports. and But those stuff, that stuff. Um, I, I bust my ACL and I fought for a year with it and I, I kept falling over. Stupid. And it, I, now the hip bone's connected to the something bone, mm. the something bone's connected to the, and then it all fucks up. So basically, if one thing's mucked up, it affects your whole chain. Since my, my leg went in 2006, I've had a whole tirade of problems all, all around my body. DC, Daniel Cormier, he, pulled his, he ripped his ACL six weeks before a fight, a world championship fight, and had stem cells and fought and won. What's going on? The technology is off the hook. Yeah, no, is. Same thing with Conor McGregor. He, mm. he did an ACL. Um, I take my hat off to him. I didn't... Um, he fought w- with a, a torn ACL for a world title. Wow. It's a stud. I know what that is. Because imagine every time you 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 put power into it, you fall over. Yeah. Because your knee feels like... You spoke about it in um, a podcast before that your last fight in Bellator, you made a deal with the son, but they totally fucked you over. <laughs> what was that story? <sighs> the reason why I did my last fight in 2016 was because before, previously before that, I'd had three fights and I was like self-harming. And I thought, I don't want to go out like this. I don't want to, I, I was a champion and I, I had credibility. I was like, I was the man. I had hundreds of fans, thousands of fans. And I was like, the hero was, so I, like, I, I want to recapture some of that. Um, my ego, my ego wanted that. And also my self-worth wanted to say, well, hang on, let's all right. You've just done three, I mean, the, the, the three fights I had before, I won one and I lost two. And I, should, I mean, ultimately, I think I won them all, but long story, I didn't care. I didn't care. But this fight, I actually wanted to go out and remind people. So I did a deal with the sun and um, I was really trained really hard. My whole emphasis was, I wasn't, I was properly training. Before I wasn't training. I'd just be doing cocaine. And then I come off the cocaine, I thought, all right, I, I can't do cocaine, I've got to start training which I didn't even train. 
for this one, I was properly up for it. And I did this deal with the son to like, look, from rags to riches, he's, he's been on his ass. He was here and now he's gone down. Now he's going to come back again, up again. And they, they wrote a, a story and they said, look, it's going to be bad. We're going to do a build up over the two months and build you up like a story every week. And they said, the first one's going to be bad and then it's going to get better. All right, okay. So the first story was talking about he's only famous because of Katie Price. What? What? <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Dude, what did you... Yeah. And then they just basically stitched me up the whole way through. Man, I was mentally destroyed before I even got into that cage. Because the whole reason why you fight isn't just to prove... It, it was, there was so much more to it. But your spirit. Your, your, literally, your spirit. If your spirit's gone, how are you supposed to fight? You know, you've got someone, two equal fighters, right? And it's, uh, no, you've got one fighter who's trained, uh, young, fit, strong, got all the techniques. And you've got one fighter who's not as trained, but got more spirit and drive. You know, often the guy with the more spirit, mm -hmm. you know, he can overcome. But if you haven't got any spirit, I had no spirit. Has it totally wore you down then, all the press and all the fame that came with it? Because you were the power couple of the Brat News were the ones the most famous at one stage does that eventually wear you down was that eventually just fucking eat away at your soul then where you no I loved it I loved it yeah. I was on a high it was like the high of the cocaine <laughs> it's, it, it really was that's mm -hmm. how I so associate it it was like mm -hmm. It was like, wow, look at this. I mean, I wasn't actually doing the drugs, but I mean, that was a drug. Yeah. This is why I talk about I mean, cocaine's a, a light drug compared to that. Fame is like, wow. And, I'm, and I see so many people still addicted to it. And it's like, I, mean, I wouldn't mind a line of fame every now and again. Do you miss it? A line of fame. Do you miss it? Um, the attention, everybody's shouting your sometimes, name. Sometimes, sometimes, and then sometimes. I still Even get though that. the dark days it put you in? I still get that, as I say, no. But it's, it, it's you, you remember, like, it's nice to actually go out and not get stopped every 30 seconds, literally, just everywhere. And I still get that, but it's nice now. It's not for nastiness stuff. Now it's, now people were like, because you can't, there's been so much bad press over me and I, when there's bad press I'd get bad people say horrible things on the street and that's not nice but people now remember me for for good stuff which is lovely you know because it's like you can't fake the the, the world continually 24-7 and people are seeing all the stuff I'm doing now you know I'm a good guy yeah they're seeing all the good stuff I'm you know they're like I think it's actually alright but you are alright I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, you clearly are when you won Big Brother because you were in there some some big fucking names. Fuck, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I do see vulnerability, and like I say, you're constantly searching. But we're trying to get acceptance, aren't we? We're trying to be light because it makes us feel. It's as if we weren't liked as kids, so we're always trying to work on us to yeah. make people like us. When you yeah. say you were self harming, were you cutting your wrists? No. When I was self-harming, I mean, I was go taking cage fights about training. Yeah. That was self-harming mm -hmm. because that's not responsible. I mean, like, if you're Killer Crusher Smith and you just knocked out 20 people and I'm just, I've gone for a jog, that's that's yeah. all my only training. I'm like, it's not really. Yeah. What's your day-to-day -day routine like then? Do you sleep much at night? Um, yeah, I sleep good. I, I put on... Um, going back to the penal gland and um, music which binaural beats and different chants and um, music which enters me into a, a deep enters me into my deep parasympathetic nervous system so I really try and heal and relax go connect your penal glands and you go off in different mm. places all over the universe dimensions yeah people watching this will think they're fucking crazy but it is, it is are we crazy techniques. everybody's crazy and yes, we are. I are believe. we crazy? Yeah. Because you talk like this. You say this. I mean, and it. I, I just before we started, I said people's attention to what we're sort of talking about, and in fact, to anything these days, is very limited because their penal glands have calcified. Um, their perception, and we've been completely dumbed down. Forget about fluoride in the water and all the other chemicals. Schooling. Schooling. 
all of that. We're, we're, the whole world has been designed. And I've said this many times. And I, I literally just heard David Icke. Talk. I shouldn't mention his name, should I? Yeah, no, he's uh, fine. David Icke's uh, been on the show. The reason why I shouldn't mention his name is because you can get down. Deep <coughs> yeah. yeah. I listen. It, it's like he's. Um, I followed some of his stuff, but I didn't follow this. And he's mm. saying the same stuff as I'm, I've come to my own analogy from all of my own research. There are, I believe, I know, benevolent and malevolent entities in around us which are controlling us. Um, we can't see them. Just because we can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. There's, there's so many fields of vision. Dave, like, really just said the same thing. I mentioned this in a different podcast the other day, and I was like... Um, you go somewhere and you can just feel an energy. You can almost cut the tension in the room with a knife. You know, there's, there's energies which are manipulating and controlling us. Intelligent as well. What do you think the humans are? What do you, what do you think we are? In what respect? Like avatars or do you think we are yes. just aliens ourselves? Or do you think... Yes. What do you think... We're the, a whole mishmash of many different... Um, there's many different... Uh, intelligent life forms and sp species across the galaxy universe who are interested in us and I think we're a complete and utter mishmash of many different I think we're like guinea forms. pigs yeah you've got to look at the technology now which we are creating human beings that through what's the things you put on your head and you can see virtual reality, virtual reality. who says this isn't it yeah I know that theory and it's like AI, you know about AI, Elon yeah. Musk. I mean, we are we're ten, twenty years away from having a chip where I can instantly talk Chinese or like in the Matrix. I now know Kung Fu. Yeah, we will have apparently a. I don't know if it's the, the, the prediction is twenty fifty. Every five seconds, uh, the equivalent of a Nobel Peace Prize. Every five seconds, what happens then? We all become one, like Borg, you know. Literally, yeah. we'll, everyone will know everything at one point. We'll be able to teleport. I mean, we are all we are is not. I'm a ions, electrons, atoms, neutrons, all vibrating at a certain frequency. Same, same. I think there's something more to me than just that. But on a physical level, I'm the same as this. Yeah, if you if, and I'm moving. I think the, I mean, the different thing. I think and I've said this time and time again that that makes me different from the table is my soul, my spirit. And I don't know what you know about the eight gram theory. Yeah, 21. Eight, 21? 21 grams. Is it 21 grams? Yeah, when you you die, the body goes 21 grams later. It's 21, I thought it was eight. Yeah, okay, 21. so no, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and what is that 21 grams? So they they did an experiment on people who were dying, and then as soon as they took their last breath, yeah. the body went 21 grams later. So they say that's the soul. Apparently it can be like DMT, whatever the pineal gland's releasing. But um, yeah, I think... I don't know. I, again, we can constantly search, but what the fuck we're searching for? When we should just actually. Well, I'm fascinated. This yeah. is why I've done things like DMT. And I mean, as a kid, why did I you do all that? As that a kid, from five years old, being bullied, yeah. asking for asking questions because I've always asked questions. Why? Why have we got a son? Why do we have to die? Why do we have to do this? And answering questions. Do you believe in reincarnation? Um, a million percent. Million percent. I was studying it for many years at the Kabbalah Center, but I've done. They've got so many holes. Billion percent. Have you read many lives, many masters? No. Read that's powerful. Many lives, many masters. Yeah, very powerful. What do you think about reincarnation? Then? I believe we come back. I believe. I believe everything's connected. Where do we go? I don't know. I just don't know. But I definitely when you did I believe. Alaska, what did you feel? I was in hell. I was in hell. So why would you do that? Why is it? Is there any positives to it? As human beings, where we are experimental creatures, we're experiment. We're always experimenting. We're hunters, aren't we? It's like we're looking for answers. We just know something's not quite right in your gut. You just feel as if we're getting fed lies. Something's not just right. Something's wrong with the world. So we experiment. I experimented through recreational drugs, cocaine, ecstasy, weed, Valium, alcohol. I was gambling, sex, but it always felt wrong. The ayahuasca, I took it. It made sense at the time, but I'm still unsure. I didn't get any massive revelations when I did yeah. Acacia. Did you not? 
I, and I done, I've done Changa a few times. I, did one, I, did, I was making a TV show about all of this. And it's still on hold. It's still coming out. I might a bit like yourself. But when I did Changa, I did a hippie rave in the New Forest. And I had probably 100 people all watching me. So I was conscious of that. So was I that a crack pipe you smoked that? Yeah. And I was thinking, well, that was going through my head. I'm smoking this on TV. <laughs> I teach children martial arts. Mm-hmm. This is, looks terrible. It looks like I'm smoking hardcore drugs. Well, it is. It's medicine. Yeah. It's different. But then again, I'm what like, is plant medicine? You can get you can cocaine and heroin for, from plants. This is have to tell me. I say hey, you mix that with bleach and petrol and fucking rat oh. poison. But there's so many plants on the world. We just don't know, do we? I believe, but they can. Bl- it, it's all about perception yeah. and propaganda and marketing. Because one cocaine still used in medicine today. So is heroin. Listen, I'm not big on drugs but listen if you're going to cut me open and take my leg off and kill me or something then I probably might like a little bit of something to, yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not totally anti-drugs mm. give me some morphine yeah <laughs> but do you feel so going through all your life how do you feel now speaking about it does about it bring back a lot of emotions about just talk, talking about your story there would you feel tired or drained after this just you just used to. I got I, earlier on. I got very animated when we were talking about Kate and the 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 abuse I've suffered and the injustice. Uh, I mean, of I've been to the, I've had five different police forces involved. I've had and they didn't. It, they've they've utterly failed. CPS, Criminal Prosecution Service, have even admitted, admitted they've they've failed. Do you know what? I should probably go after them. I, I, st- I, have, I have a right to appeal. I think I will. Because it's disgusting. How can someone get away with that? Intentionally trying to... Anyway, yeah, yeah, I answered your question. Yeah. How does your, your new other half now deal with it all? Like, all the stuff? Well, let, let's talk about that. Now. We, we've gone over the past. Let's talk about the future. Yeah. There's some really good stuff going on. I good. mean, um, I, uh, I've always got in, been into my health and fitness. I'm into longevity. So... Um, and balance is sometimes doing some things that are not necessarily bad for you, not necessarily good for you, sorry. So it's all very well being healthy the whole time, but sometimes it's good to go and have a beer. Maybe not for everybody. Um, eat a bit of chocolate cake. You know, have some fish and chips. So with the health and fitness, I run boot camps, which is I actually love. Do you know why? It's because I'm like I'm performing. I'm having to raise people's vibrations and get them motivated, and I like that, and it's fun. It's like I get to heal people in a weird way, um, and it's fun. And I, so I run in my boot camp, so my plan is to take over London. Um, but my ultimate love, and my still love, is acting, and I am still acting. Um, I've just got something very, very good. What kind of parts do you try and look for? Um, Gangster, fighter? N- n- no. Transvestite? <laughs> no. No, would you not do that if it popped up? No, um, no. No, because I know you laugh and it's funny. For yeah, everybody. of course, we've got to laugh. But, no, but it's not funny. Do you still me. Do the reason why, and it's like, I'm not, I don't take offence. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, because you don't, the pain is caused. Is it still there, the trauma? It's not the trauma of me doing it. Mm-hmm. It's the trauma that's been created. Caused in the past? It's not the past. Mm-hmm. It's the trauma which has been created by me being denigrated. And 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 having, I'm not even considering myself a transvestite. Yeah. I've, I've done, I'm not even, yeah, I guess if I've worn women's clothes and enjoyed it, your hands up. I don't want to be a woman. I'm a man, you know, but I mean, so what? I've, I've, I'm an actor. Um, I guess that makes you, you could say, define yourself. I don't define, do you know, I was on a TV show. Um, I was on Channel 4 News and I was talking about the Jeremy Kyle show. Someone just committed suicide. And I was talking about how it could, they asked, do you think it should be um, banned? Um, or do you think it could come back? I said, well, actually, it has the ability to, if they could make it like that, who's that lesbian lady in America? Oh, Ellen. Ellen Gen- and, 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 and uh, if it was a show like that, it would be brilliant. And what I just said, that lesbian lady. My PR guy said, Alex, why did you say that? We can't use that now. Because I defined that person as the lesbian lady. Even though I was doing, I was just thinking about it. Oh, what's that? I, because there's people, there's also being too PC. 
I get it. I mean, I can have a laugh about wearing a dress and all that sort of stuff. But for me, when you're completely defined as that and nothing else, it's like, well, that's, that's, that's not right because it's stopping me feeding. Yeah. So if I keep making fun of you about something, it's okay. Look, I, can, I can have a laugh. Mm -hmm. But I'm like... <sighs> Does it get tired in? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, okay. I, 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 I understand people, you can have your laugh, but I, I'm like, okay, yeah. Okay. Is it try to get away from it, break it, yeah. break the habit? Yeah, it's, it's not even a habit for me. Yeah. I'm like, but I have to accept that's what people's, um, and it would just be better. Mm -hmm. It'd be better, and I am, you know. Listen, if it, I'd do a gangster role. In fact, I just did, uh, no, the last two I did was, the film I did last year, I, think I, did, I did two plays. One was about freedom of speech, freedom of rights, civil liberties, um, a true story. The one was an American, I played an American, um, and that was Die, Mummy, Die. Um, big, big show. And then I did a film where I was a Nazi um, henchman for a modern day Nazi society, secret society, where they were, they'd done experiments. This is true. They did experiment on Siamese twins and people mm -hmm. to try and get them to do telepathy. What shall, if you were to pick any part in the world, what part would you pick? I like um, Christopher Walken. You know, you know him? Yeah. I like the sort of films. He's that sort of... Weird talker, yeah. kind of different. Yeah. kind of like that, mm -hmm. yeah. And I've, the next role I've got I, is a dream come true. Is it? you excited for the future? Good. Life changing. Mm -hmm. Do you, f you law of attraction to play? Do you goal set? Plan for the future? The like goal setting <laughs> always, and stuff? Always. And do you know what? I, I, I need to do more of it. We all need to do more of this. Vision board. Write, write down what you plan on doing because mm -hmm. you, you, it happens. It yeah. works. You, for this, people watching, if you write it down, it becomes clearer in the mind. And if it becomes clearer in the mind, it becomes easier to attract. So it does. Goal setting what about is massive. You? I do affirmations, goal setting every morning. Are you morning. careful what you say? Because we all say negative things. We're, we're, we're the biggest well, cheerleader we have is ourselves. Yeah, you are what you speak. So I actually was listening to a book there and this, this says when you speak, if you look gossip, it's like black magic. And Dr. Amoto, there's, I think they do the race challenge on, it's the YouTube videos, they filled two race jars with, um, race jars with race. Say I love you at one for 30 days, I hate you at one for 30 days. Yeah. The one that say I love you is still pure white. Yeah. The one that says I hate you is all black, blue and mouldy. So you are what you speak. The brain doesn't know what's real or what's fake. So if you're have, even me having a laugh, I'm always having a laugh, but the brain doesn't know if it's serious or not. So I'm always at the wind up, noising people up. So I need to be as careful. How do you, tell me, you, you, you've done Reiki, yeah? Yeah. Reiki master? Yeah. When did you, do you read Seora's? Yeah. Your ability? Energies. Oh, you do? Yeah. I'm a Reiki master. Yeah. I haven't practiced since I can mm -hmm. remember. So I've forgotten more than I can remember. I did mm -hmm. Sekham as well. I don't know if you heard of that. No, I did Holy Fire Reiki, by a woman called Lorna McLean, <sighs> which was intense shit. So it was. But powerful, but I don't... Can you see it, energy now? Energies, yes. Energies, frequencies, vibrations. I see auras. So if that's something that comes into a room, I can tell where I can feel their presence. So I can. And I know you're trying to read minds just now. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's people might think, "Fuck me, what are they talking about?" But p people will understand as well. Everybody knows who's in a good mood, bad mood. People can see postures, energies, everything. But like somebody sends you a text message, I know if it's an angry one or how I can tell by their mood by a text message. What, really? Yeah. I mean, obviously, if I'm calling you total bastard you mm. ask oh you don't yeah. uh, it's obvious i'm angry yeah if i said um darling could you bring the tea home mm -hmm. that's pleasant but how do you know i might be thinking you're an evil bastard nah, but you when you get home i'm gonna kill you <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what it is it's just i just feel frequencies vibrations i believe because my vibrations high i believe that i can feel better presence feel energies feel people who's sad happy you can i can change somebody's mindset in an instant if I speak to them and it's 
you can't go about fucking trying to change the world though and giving everybody and preaching to everyone because then you just come across a fucking psychopath. But if somebody needs help, I get countless messages every day from people battling addiction, suicide, homelessness. That's just to try and guide them. But I need to protect myself because it can become tiring. Mm. It's very tiring. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Just got to Where were you born? Glasgow, 84. 1984, when's mm-hmm. your birthday? 2nd of February. Aquarius. Do you go on that? What do you think about the new star sign? I think it's all bullshit, the new star sign. Has NASA kind of thing changed the star signs? I don't think it's NASA, no. I think it's ancient Babylonian. Yeah, but I don't think it's actually changed. What do you believe in all that? I don't know. Again, paralysis analysis. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a, I'm a rabbit and a crab. <laughs> a rabbit, Chinese, yeah. and then he's like, how does it go? I don't know. I'm sure there's a million different ones, yeah. isn't there? So, going through all your life, what is your plans for the future? You're acting, are you, you, are you going to keep working on yourself mentally, physically? Well, I did tell you, I've just landed something yeah, the very, role. very mm-hmm. big. Yeah. When can we find out that? <laughs> Soon? Probably next year. Good. Yeah. I might be going quiet for a bit. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Um, acting. And, and um, obviously, I still love boot camps. I mean, I, that's... Acting is feast or famine. Where can people get your book counts? Where can I see it? Alex Reed, oh, sorry, um, bcuk.uk. That's bootcampuk.uk. Um, across the country, um, particularly the South at the moment, so sorry, Scott, it's um, £10 for 10 sessions. If you go on the app, that's that's a bargain. And I can guarantee you, all um, ex military people. And ex military people is a good camaraderie, good banter, professional, all sorts of fun exercises, all weathers. Um, check it out. Also, more importantly, what I'd like to, to talk about so, my plan is to take over London with the boot camps, um, take two sites on a year. I currently have Bushy, which is North London, and Mill Hill, um, North London again. So, check me out. Um, if you want to follow me on uh, Alex Reed Official on Instagram or at Alex Reed on Twitter, I can message you and you'll see all my stuff there. I've also formed the Bob Reed Foundation. I talked about this. Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're struggling going through the family courts, I've spent hundreds of thousands of pounds, everything I have, and and you know, been on my complete and utter ass, suicidal so many times because of what the courts have put me through and other people and I would just love to have had some an association like this before we can offer free advice and we can offer professional advice um if you if you need some help check it out www.thebobreedfoundation.com yeah for anybody that's struggling the now or looking for advice maybe who's been bullied themselves what advice would you give for them um Talk to someone. Talk to someone. You need to speak about it. You need to have a pressure valve. This is the saddest thing. The, the, the suicide rate of young men our age. I've lost four friends, very dear friends, my age, all hung themselves. Um, and you wouldn't think they were sad. Because men put on a brave smile and a brave face, especially squaddies. Hey, I'm fine. Everything's fine. It isn't fine. They look at me the whole cross-dressing thing. It's fine. I was raped, literally, raped. not physically, but I mean, it was, it absolutely and and continually raped for ten years. Every time, trying to you know, trying to destroy me. Um, it's you need to shout to shout. That's why I'm actually now only finally really talking about it. I've never really talked about this. Uh, it's um, men. We we are the we don't have a pressure valve because we've got to be men. You know, um, especially when uh, men going through the family courts, they're one of the highest suicide rates. So many men are dying, not being able to afford the the horrible child support agency, was it CMS? Child Maintenance Service rates. For, who I don't want to go too much into it, but there's a lot of corruption and it will be exposed. Yeah. And that's sad because we don't want us, we've got to ultimately, people, and this is the thing, people don't care about men dying. That's another man dying. 
you know, so what? It's, it's, we're desensitized to it. But we need to, people talk about it. People don't care about it until it's someone you know. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And the suicide rate's risen 250% since lockdown. So people are struggling, and the majority are men. So there's definitely some sort of something there that is amiss that why so many men are taking their lives. But what it is, to, to, so let's, let's give you some more answers. Talk. The thing is to find people. Um, who you love and who love you. And if you don't have those, create it. Create it. And it's so, it could be so difficult because when you're in such a depressed state, you can't, depressed state, you can't see the wood for the trees. So it's about just being, imagining, even faking it, imagining that you can see yourself happy. Just pretend even. And would you, I mean, would you, you like to be happy? And when you are miserable, I don't want to be fucking miserable. Everyone going, fuck off. I, I, fuck. But, Ultimately, when you calm down from that, well, actually, it's not good to want to kill yourself. I, this is why I'm having therapy. I don't, I, this isn't how, I'm not going to kill myself because I know there are people that love me and I'm, and I'm loved and I know I'm helping people, but I still feel so low that I actually want to take my own life. And I'm like, this isn't right. I'm going crazy. I'm talking to myself, literally. I'm fucked up. What's going on, man? I just and, and I have these sort of conversations every week with uh, my counsellor, and I'm like, that's not. It's not a haunt, normal. But I know that's not normal. So I'm actually there's some relief because I'm, I've got a pressure valve. I've actually acknowledged um, to seek help. I was advised they wanted to put me on drugs and stuff. I said I'm not taking those. Um, thank you very much. I, from my experience, from what I've everything I've. Uh, read on that I don't think that's the way forward not for me I mean listen I've done my own form of drugs and I'm not talking recreation I'm talking about things like, things like acacia which is actually and plant medicines and having shamanic rituals have you done the frog? no the toad does that the toad they've got, the, they've got a centre here in London somebody keeps telling me to do it but I think there's one on Oxford yeah. Street um, fans at the end of the day yeah, let's go down there now <laughs> no, got a boot. couple of toads yeah it's probably not yeah. the best basically if, if you're not you don't know what a frog is it's a, it's another one you get a a frog on it, the poison of the frog and it gives you a trip mm -hmm. first of all brother for recognising that you you need help when you want to Stop the demons and the pain and kind of work on yourself. It takes courage and it shows that you're a, you are a true fighter. So f well done. And for trying to help other people get out of darkness, again, takes courage. So for everything you've went through, it's kind of led you to where you are today. And for coming on here today and telling your story, it's very much appreciated. Would you like to finish up on anything? I just, like, just finish it off on that. Um, if you're feeling low, be nice to someone. Just smile at someone. Just, and it just, uh, the best one thing to do there for awareness is meditation. Even if you're not a big harmony, harmony, meditate, just be quiet for like two minutes. Sit down and just try and just be really quiet. Let's do it now and listen to everything. What can you hear? The fridge. Exactly. And then you can start to hear things outside. You can start to hear, you can start to hear your indigestion. You can hear your, your intention goes, that's a form of meditation, focusing, just quieting. That gives you awareness. When you have awareness of everything that's going on in your whole body, your mind, spirit, the more you get it, you become aware of even more things. You start seeing everything. You know this if you're a Reiki master, I mean, you've done a, um, ayahuasca. Um, this is, we are dumbed down. What's one thing we can instantly help ourselves and help other people? Smile. Just smile at someone. Hey. And just, and, and don't, not a fake smile. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. Just, just have some affection and love to out there. You might not feel like it, but guess what? You put it out, it's going to come back. Mm. And that ultimately is that, that smile, when you're feeling like shit and killing yourself, that can make all of the difference. Just one person. It's just, it's those little tiny things. And I'm so big on that. Yeah. But like I say, mate, you've came a long way and you're still fighting, so it takes courage, so fair play. And I don't want to fight anymore, that's the thing. Yeah. But sometimes we have to. Yeah, it's our life journey yeah, I believe. on this, on this yeah. planet called Alexander mm -hmm. Reed at the moment. Mm -hmm. Alex. Thank you, sir. Well